Ms. Sturgeon? Here. Ms. Casalonis? Here. Ms. Perry? Here. Ms. Starr? Here. Mr. Hinton? Here. Um, can we please have the pledge? Agenda item 4.0, adjustments to the agenda. Yes, there are several adjustments to the agenda tonight. Um, adding 6.0, Scarborough High School Principal Search Update. Then 7.0 will become new business. And under that, you'll have 7.15, 7.16, and 7.17, which will be appointments. And 7.3 is a Scarborough Middle School donation. Thank you. Um, Agenda item um, 5.0, public comment on agenda items. Um, do we have any folks that wish to speak to agenda items? Um, if you could please address your comments to the chair and um, please state your name and address. I'm refrain from making any comments about any particular person. You'll have three minutes to speak and um, please, please only speak to agenda items. Thank you. Sure. Kristen Nilsson, um, 23 Morning Street. I, um, I, I, I'm standing up here today was a very hard day um, for a lot of people at the high school. Um, we had the last staff day and although I um, had to leave as a member of the staff back in March because of graduate school, um, I still have remained very involved with the staff and um, very, you know, I, I care a lot about them. I care a lot about the kids and so I attended the last staff day. It was gut-wrenching, to be honest. And I, I wish that it could have been happier. I wish it could have been more celebratory. Um, but the truth is that I sat in a room with, with 100 of my former colleagues, and there wasn't a dry eye in the room. I'm sad. I'm disappointed. And... I wish that I had answers to tell the kids when they ask me, you know, Miss Nilsson, why is this happening? Why is that happening? I wish I had those answers. And I understand that it's really none of my business to know a lot of those answers because I'm not part of an HR department at the high school or at the, in the school system. But when I am asked those questions by the students, by the parents, by the staff. I can't give them any logical reason why we had a devastating day today. I haven't heard any mention from the school board about the recall, about the no confidence vote. This community is devastated and I feel as though Everything was, it happened, and it's over, and we're brushing it under the rug. Like, we don't have a responsibility to discuss a path forward. And there is one solution, one solution. And I'm not going to say it, because we all know what it is. And if I do say it, I'll be talking about a specific person, a specific employee of the school system who is revered, respected, admired, loved. And the fact that I am even up here three and a half months after the recall started, the fact that I'm still up here having to address this is, it, it could have been prevented. It could have been ended. Things could have been different. So. My involvement with Scarborough Schools is now over. I will not be working here, here next year. I will not be with the kids that I love. I will not be with the families and the staff that have meant so much to me over these last three years. And I just wanted to end it on that note. But thank you for, for the opportunity to speak. I wish it were ending in a different way. But I'm, I'm making the decision to just remove myself. So. I wish you all the best, and thank you. Thank you. My name is Alyssa 
will shift a little bit to Saratoga Lane. I um, would like to speak about the interim um, principal position and the principal vacancy that's on the agenda tonight. I'm, I'm not usually an optimist, and many people told me that it's sort of a waste of my time to speak on this subject, but I think that we have demonstrated some pro progress on many of the issues and I'm not willing to give up hope that we can't all work together and collaborate and hear the voices of the community and um, respect the opinions of all people. I think that the Board of Education has made mistakes. I think that um, the superintendent has made mistakes. I'm sure that, the, that, principal, that our principal has made mistakes and I know I've made mistakes throughout this process that I wish I had done differently or better or um, change my words at times. Um, and I think that this is a real important crossroads where we could move forward on healing. We found common ground with proficiency-based learning. For me, that made a huge difference for my own family and for our beliefs in the Scarborough system and the, our hope that they could be fully educated here. We have the obvious answer. We have a vacancy. We have a superintendent who's intelligent, who's demonstrating that she's willing to address some of the concerns of the community. And we have a person who needs a job who the community wants to represent our school system. And if we look for any solution other than that option, to me, it's going to seem as though it's sour grapes and, and we're stuck and, and we've made progress and I just implore you to move forward and and look at look at it humanely. <laughs> Somebody needs a job, they're capable, they're competent, we want them. I'm willing to give people a second chance. Can't we give him a second chance? We, I mean we could all do one year and it could be with conditions and we could all be happy. I mean you can manage that. So you've demonstrated an ability to move forward on other issues. And I'm just asking you to please don't get stuck in, in your position. I mean, we all have suffered from that, but you, you, can, you can do that. Thank you. Amy Glidden, 104 Ashmont Road. I, I think everybody in this room most likely knows where I stand on on many of the issues that have challenged our community over the past couple of months. I am an educator. I have been an educator for 26 years. I am from a family of educators. Um, I'm one of five children. Four of us are in education. I am flabbergasted that our community had to send a letter stating that they do not have any qualified candidates to put forth to the superintendent to be principal of Scarborough High School. That makes me really sad. I, I have no skin in the race anymore. My, my youngest just graduated and she's moving forward. But you guys don't have a principal. And you are, I don't know, I mean, you have a viable candidate. I have been in education long enough to know you're going to hire an interim principal. It's probably going to be somebody within the high school. I know it's not going to be who the community wants. That makes me heartbroken because I think this is a machination of egos that people are not willing to step back to be self-reflective and to do what is right for this community. At the end of the day, it's not gonna impact my family, it's not gonna impact my children, but it's gonna impact many families and many children. And you guys have an opportunity to think about how you're gonna to wanna to move forward. You don't have a principle you didn't have anybody that you were confident to move forward to Superintendent Kuchenberger to endorse as a principal of Scarborough High School. 
You have somebody who's packing his office up right now who is highly qualified. You guys need to look inward and do some soul searching and understand that you can have an opportunity to do what's right for this community and start to heal it so we can move forward. Thank you. April Sider, 14 Huntley Drive. Uh, earlier today, I wrote a very simple email. It says, good afternoon. Per the letter sent to the district today, I would ask that you please consider to offer the interim position to David. It is never too late to do the right thing. Respectfully, April Sider. Thank you. My name is Claire Merrill, 29 J. McConville Road. Last Monday, I was elected president of the senior class. So, <laughs> thank you. I just want to say that speaking on behalf of the great, great majority of my school, we know what we want. In nine days, we're not going to have a principal, and that's really, really scary. And we don't know what's going to happen. My class has been through change every single year since sixth grade. Whether that be a schedule change, a time change, a block change, it's been hard. And next year, we have a start time change, and we don't have a principal. I don't know what to say at this point. There's a really clear answer, and we, the, Scar the students of Scarborough High School, want our principal back. That's all there is to it. Thank you. Was there anyone, any, I, any other comments? Seeing none, we'll close public comment. Um, moving on to six, oh, 6.0 Scarborough High School principal search update. Um, sure. Um, I did take part of the principal search um, committee that was comprised of 13 other administrators, teachers, staff, community members, and students. We met last Thursday and Friday with the four candidates who were brought forward to our team after the initial screening process was completed. They each had approximately one hour to answer our, our panel questions and then the follow-up time to ask questions of their own of us. Each of the candidates had something unique to offer. And after careful deliberation, the committee came to the consensus that we were not recommending a candidate to, for a second interview. We discussed the merits of opening the full search again or moving to a one-year interim principal position. We unanimously agreed that the one-year interim principal was recommended and preferred to look internally to fill that role that someone who knew our high school, our students and staff would be our preference. We did agree that if no one internally was interested in the position, our committee would reconvene to interview external candidates for the one year role. Thank you. Any, yes, I know, any comments or questions regarding that? Seeing I have to reflect. You want to, yeah. All right. Um, moving on to 7.0, um, off, superintendent authorization of summer hires. Do I? So just be, just to give a little background, um, this was on the agenda last time. Typically, in the first meeting in June, business meeting in June, we, um, I request or past superintendents request authorization for summer hires. And this is a really critical process that's in place to ensure that we're able to secure the most highest quality candidates. Um, just to give some real-time examples of what can happen if we don't have that authority over the summer months, and the, the rationale behind that is because we only have two meetings in the summer, one in July and Point one of order, Madam Chairperson. This item has been tabled, and it needs to be voted off the table before we can have it. Okay. So I so move that this, <coughs> excuse me, that this item be removed from the table and be part of the agenda. So and it, and Hillary has yeah. a whole. Yeah, Julie, uh, I have a information snippet yeah. uh, open to ideas on names for that um, that um, I can go over that Joanne and I worked on, um, and then if you have anything to add to that afterwards. Sure. Um, we have to vote that. to take it off the table. We just. Yep. No, we just oh, we vote. Oh, okay, sorry. So all in favor? 
important one. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Kelly, I put, I put that on Google Drive. I don't know if you can get it up there or not. I didn't mean to interrupt the superintendent, but. Did you want to finish though first? I'm not really sure what Hillary's showing. So. Oh, it's, it's what we talked about in communications. So a little background um, at our communications meeting yesterday, we had talked about um, giving some additional information on agenda items that um, people might not be aware of the background about or how things work and the process, the processes. Um, as n new board members, some of us didn't even know how this works, so we thought it would maybe um, help when if we were able to do that so this was this is just um, like we'll call it a pilot <laughs> um, I put this together and this would be something that like we would put up maybe on our Facebook page or email out um, when there's an agenda item that people might not really you know like it says summer hiring authority well um, this kind of explains a little bit I can read it out loud um, during the summer, the board may vote to give the superintendent temporary hiring authority. This means that teacher and ed tech contracts can be offered to qualified candidates without being voted on by the board. This authority does not apply to administration, administrative positions. There are two main reasons the board may choose to allow this temporary hiring authority. The first one is that there are usually many positions to fill over the summer months, and during this time, the board meets less frequently. We only meet one time per month instead of two. Um, this means that there may be a long wait between the time when a top candidate is identified and the next board meeting when a contract can be offered. Um, since many other districts are also hiring during the summer, giving summer hiring authority allows administrators to lock down their top choices with a contract in a competitive market. Um, the second reason is beginning on August 1st, um, teachers who resign from their positions can be retained by their districts until after the school year begins um, in order to facilitate the transition to a new teacher. Um, the, what's the MSSA? M main superintendent? Main school main, management. Main, no, MSSA? Main school board superintendent. association. Okay. Um, anyway, they caution that superintendents must proceed with great care during this time period and they have a professional obligation to honor this notice period. Direct recruitment on contracted personnel during this time is strongly discouraged. Therefore, it is most beneficial to be able to make hiring decisions quickly in June and July. And some of this, I think, the background of, of how the hiring works would be, um, would be beneficial too, but basically, um, say there's a position at Wentworth, and um, so the Wentworth principal would create, is she here? <laughs> Um, would create, I, I assume, like a committee of teachers or whoever, and, and they would identify um, who they want to who they want to interview, and um, they would then come up with their top choice. This person would then be um, come up to, so typically they would then go up to um, central office. They would have maybe some um, additional um, references checked and and an interview, and then they would be offered a contract but they can't actually give them the contract until the board votes on it. So they can say, hey, you're our top candidate and we're gonna be presenting you to the board, but it, um, it might be a week under normal circumstances. In the summer, it might be longer than that. And if they have an offer from a district that says, I'll give you the contract tomorrow, and you don't have to wait those two weeks, then that puts us at a disadvantage. So anyway, <coughs> that's the background of that. And if anyone has any ideas on the information snippet title, I'm willing to entertain them because it's not my best work. <laughs> Are there any um, Yes, I, I move approval for the superintendent to hire during the summer and offer contracts until the next school board meeting. Do I have a second? <coughs> Is there any discussion regarding that? Thank you. That, that background, I think, is really helpful to be as part of the transparency to the community. So thank you for putting that together. Did you have some other? No. Oh, did you have anything else? I was just going to add, add to some specific examples of things that happened this week, but I think that. Okay. Thank you. 
Um, I just had a question about when, so this is um, authority from now until the meeting in July? Right. Or, okay. Yeah. And then at the meeting in July, will you ask for, would you typically ask for it again until the meeting in August or not because that passes it's that August the summer first? Months, so until the September 1 board meeting. Okay. So, so it's not the September next board meeting. meeting. It's the September right. board meeting. Right. Okay. Because there might be times between July and August that also there's yeah. candidates come forward. Right. I just thought Jackie had said until the next board meeting. Well, typically the superintendent would present the board with a list of the people who have been hired mm -hmm. in, in the interim. Right. So that's why I say normally it's until the next board meeting when we would see. Who oh, that's when we would see who has been. Hired. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Any other comments, questions? Um, yes, all in favor? <coughs> four, four and one. Uh, agenda item 7.2 appointments. And are we planning on voting on? Them individually? I would like to do them individually, individually. because some of our new okay. hires are oh, here okay. tonight. Great. And so it'd be nice to introduce them to the community, and uh, I appreciate them taking me up on the offer to be here. Um, so 6.1 is a K5 resource. Or, 7. or I'm sorry, 7.1 is a K5 resource librarian. Um, Rosemary, I believe, is here. Rosemary, do you mind standing as I read a little bit to the community? So, Rosemary. Lenahan has been chosen to fill this position created by a retirement. Ms. Lenahan received her Bachelor of Arts degree in History from Bates College in Lewiston. She received her Master's of Arts in Teaching from Brown University and just recently completed her Master of Library and Information Science from the University of South Carolina. She's been a classroom teacher for over 12 years, including two years at the International School in Man Manila, Philippines. Um, Ms. Lenahan was a library intern at Skillen Elementary School in South Portland this past winter. Ms. Lenahan will be placed on step one of the master scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Rosemary Lenahan as the K-5 resource librarian. So move. Second. Any questions or comments? Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah, all in favor, but I, but I believe that it's just the board members. Right. Yeah, just board members that approve hires. Yeah. So all in favor? Four? Thanks, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Agenda name 7.2, Eight Corners School Classroom Teacher. Yes, Amanda Peabody. Amanda Peabody has been nominated to fill this position created by a retirement. Ms. Peabody earned a, her Bachelor of Arts degree in elementary education from the University of New England, where she also anticipates earning her Master of, Educa Master of Education in Literacy Education in 2019. Ms. Peabody has been a first grade teacher at Biddeford Primary School for two years. Ms. Peabody will be placed on step three of the bachelor scale per the per collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Amanda Peabody as an eight quarters um, elementary school classroom teacher. So moved. Second. Any comments or questions? Welcome to eight quarters. Mm -hmm. Seeing none, all in favor? Four. <laughs> and moving on to another appointment, Pleasant Hill School Principal. Yes, 7.1.3, and I believe. Jessica is here. So I am excited to introduce to you Jessica Steele, who has been chosen to fill this position, which is created by a retirement. Ms. Steele received her Bachelor of Science degree in Family and Consumer Sciences and Child Family Development from the University of Georgia, where she also earned her Master of Education. She earned her Certificate of Advanced Studies in Educational Leadership from the University of Southern Maine. Ms. Steele has been, um, was a classroom teacher for seven years in Georgia and has also been in administration both in Georgia and in Maine for several years. This current school year, she was a principal intern at the Wentworth School with our lovely principal, Ms. Mrs. Crosby. And the recommendation is to appoint Jessica Steele as the Pleasant Hill primary school principal. So moved. Second. Before you vote, you do approve Ms. Steele. She has prepared a few remarks for you. Does she oh. speak English or Georgia? <laughs> <laughs> I do speak a little Southern. But, uh, 
Thank you. You, you should be able to, I hope you can understand. So, thank you. Um, it is an honor and a privilege um, to be presented as the principal candidate for Pleasant Hill Primary School. Um, I've been working, as Julie said, in the field of education for over 17 years um, as both a teacher, uh, I'm sorry, with um, students from preschool through adults. Um, I've been a teacher and a leader um, in, the, in those roles. Um, in joining both the Pleasant Hill and larger Scarborough community, I understand that I will be uh, working among some of the best teachers and leaders in the state of Maine. I assure you that I am committed, ready, and willing to give my very best to this work so that our students and community continue to thrive. I'm really excited about many new relationships um, I will build with teachers, students, and parents at Pleasant Hill. I believe at my core that children deserve nothing less than the best of us and ensure that our school culture, I'm sorry, and will work with my colleagues and Pleasant Hill families um, to ensure that our school culture, our curriculum, and our teaching practices are aligned to benefit and grow all students and the successful learners that we know they can be. I thank you for your trust that I'm the right candidate for this position, and I look forward to the fantastic work we will do together over the coming years. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for your comments. <laughs> um, all in favor? Four. Yes, on your separate stipend sheet, you will see um, the request for approval of Deb Dougherty as the Oak Hill Players Director um, for Jonathan Neely, who has retired from that position. Do we have a motion? So move. Second. Any comments? Well, I've stipend committee met yesterday, and I have heard from Mr. Legage that, that the person Ms. Ms. Doherty is, has 40 years of, did, he, did you say 40 years of experience working with young people and, and adults in, in the theater industry? And Mr. Legage, uh, part of the hiring team over there, just thinks that this is going to be absolutely beneficial for our young people. Oh, so I highly endorse, uh, recommend that we hire this person. Thank you. Claire, Claire will be the judge of that, I'm sure. Thank <laughs> you. Um, any other comments or questions? Uh, all in favor? Four. Thank you. Uh, another appointment, 7.1.5 uh, for a Wentworth School classroom teacher. Yes, so another fine candidate to present to you tonight, Katie Venezuela, has been selected to fill this position that was also created by a retirement. Ms. Venezuela received both her Bachelor of Science in Liberal Studies and her Master of Education in Literacy and Culture from Longwood University in Virginia. Mrs. Venezuela was a classroom teacher for six years in Virginia before becoming a teacher in New Hampshire. Most recently, she has been a long-term substitute in the fourth grade in a fourth grade classroom at Wentworth. Ms. Venezuela will be placed on step 11 of the master scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Katie Venezuela as the Wentworth School classroom teacher. So moved. Second. Any comments or questions? I would just add for all the Wentworth students who are wondering who their teachers are, now the code has been <laughs> cracked. <laughs> well, wonderful. Um, all in favor? Four. Another appointment. 7.1.6 for a Wentworth School classroom teacher. So Wentworth has been very busy jumping on the early recruitment of really high quality candidates. Um, Rachel is here with us tonight. If you could please stand, Rachel, so we could introduce you to the community. Um, and I might need some help with your last name, so I say it properly. Galesian. Galesian. I would knock on that. Rachel Galesian has been nominated to fill this position, which was also created by retirement. Ms. Galesian earned her bachelor, both her Bachelor's of Arts degree in Communications and her Master's degree in Counselor, uh, counselor of Education from the University of Maine. She has been a school counselor in schools in Leeds, Maine, and most recently at the McMahon Elementary in Lewiston for the last five years. 
Ms. Galesian will be placed on step nine of the master scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Rachel Galesian as the Wentworth School Counselor. So move. Second. Any questions or is it is she the, the teacher? Because I, I thought we were yeah, she, you were the teacher, correct? Because did you not? Skip one. I skip. We'll go back. Okay. She's okay, a so school counselor. So okay. Seven points. You did get that right. Okay. Seven point one. Welcome. All in favor? No, all, all in favor? Four. Congratulations. All right. So we're going back to seven point one point. Yes, and I don't have a little write up about Amy, um, but. It's right here. Oh, my God, I posted over it. My apologies. All right, erase all of that. Amy Sullivan, is Amy here? Okay, good. Um, <laughs> Amy Sullivan has been nominated to fill this position created by a retirement. Ms. Sullivan earned her Bachelor of Arts degree from Stonehill College and her master's in elementary education from Lesley University. She has been an elementary classroom teacher for several years in schools in Massachusetts and most recently in South Portland. Ms. Sullivan has been placed on step nine of the master's scale per the collective bargaining agreement and the recommendation is to appoint Amy Sullivan as, a Wentworth, as the Wentworth School classroom teacher. So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Four. Thank you. Moving on to 8.0, um, the workshop. Oops, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 7.3, 7 the middle school donation. The challenge of the business, the agenda. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm excited to present to the board a donation from our very own um, Nancy Kroll, our librarian here at the Public Library. Uh, the Scarborough Middle School this week received a donation in the amount of $500 from Nancy representing the funds um, donated, the, the funds represented here are donated to the Scarborough Middle School's Learning Commons and will be used for books and other library needs. So we are asking for your approval to deposit the check into the Scarborough Middle School Library account for future use. Um, and we thank Nancy so much for this very generous donation to the Scarborough Middle School Library. Absolutely, move, move acceptance of the donation with great thanks. Second, any comments? Thank you. Wonderful. Our library is wonderful, wonderful resource. Definitely. All in favor? Four. All right, so now moving on to our workshop agenda. Um, seven, oh no, I'm sorry, 8.1 um, Board of Education Self Evaluation, Goal Setting, and Establishing Norms. Mary, if you wouldn't mind, I would offer for our new teachers who were just hired, if they would like to stay, they certainly can. If they would like to go, you may do that as well. Oh. Thank you for coming. Congratulations, yeah. Rachel. Thank you. All right, so moving on to the um, our school board workshop, which is a school board self-evaluation pilot program. We are, um, I start out with the Scarborough Public Schools missions and values. Our core value statement, Scarborough is committed to all students becoming college, career, and civic ready through student-centered learning. Our mission is the fundamental purpose of Scarborough Public Schools is to provide a safe and inclusive learning environment for every, each and every student is empowered to be a resilient, lifelong le learner who is prepared to engage as a contributing member of society. Um, I just wanted to start with that because that's kind of at the basis of all we do as a school board. And then moving on, I just want to, what we are looking to do with a self-assessment is to reflect. Um, reflection, looking backwards to the view, looking forward is even clearer. So we hope to, we have reasons for doing self-evaluation. Um, we hope to have this help us to provide us with information to enhance our work as leaders. Um, this will hold the board accountable to themselves, the staff, and the community, and foster open lines of communication, help board members understand the areas of board operation that need attention or improvement, identify strengths and weaknesses of the board as a whole, this process enhances our ability to set goals and make long-range plans and allows us to hold ourselves to the same standards as the professional staff. Our professional staff also in, engages in self-assessment um, 
and we want to we want to be doing the same. So uh, the process we'll take forward is we will evaluate our experiences and then document them using a self-evaluation tool, reflect on our findings, and then make goals for the future. And this process will continue, will keep continuing with boards in the future as well. Um, our outline for tonight, um, we are going to, we have um, packets for each of the board members, and we will be spending time looking at the, we've gotten a evaluation system from the RSU 21, and um, with their permission, we are able to kind of look at that and, and make it, standardize it for, for the Scarborough needs, so we'll spend um, time looking at this evaluation system, spending about five minutes on each of the standards within the system. Um, then we hope to make a timeline for the self-evaluation self and the goals work. Um, later on, board members will be able to complete the online evaluation tool after we have um, made adjusted it to be what we need to be for Scarborough. And then we will review and reflect on the results and create a goal um, for the next four months. And then the goal is for future boards to have structure to create new goals and continue the process. Um, and then our tools for self-assessment, which are also included in the packet, um, we have this school board evaluation document um, borrowed and edited with permission from RSU 21. Um, we've also looked at a few other evaluation models from New York. Um, we have our policies to guide our work. Um, AD, which is the Educational Philosophy and Mission, ADA, School Department Goals and Objectives, BCA, Board Member Code of Ethics, and, op and our Operating Protocol, which is was placed on our, um, face on, 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 our, on our page, website, website page, thank you. <laughs> and then as well, our SPS Long Range Vision and Values document, and then we also have some previous year's school board goals that we can use in the future when we are working to make the goals. So um, lastly, I just did a quote, ask yourself if what you're doing today is getting you closer to where you want to be tomorrow. So we really hope this process of doing a self-assessment will allow us to, to really look inward at what the board is, is doing and what we're doing well and what we're not doing well and, and also to make goals, make goals for the future so that we can continue to improve just as our, our professional staff make goals and continue to improve. That is what we hope to do as well. So um, we can kind of start out with, if there's any questions first to start out from any of the board members, but I, I had a plan to look at this evaluation system and spend either, there's five standards within it, um, and kind of spend about five minutes on each standard, looking at that standard, seeing does that fit for Scarborough, does anyone have any comments, any things that they might want to change regarding um, regarding those standards and and also and then after doing that um, we want to set up a timeline for how we want to progress with these with these activities because we will need to have time to do the do the online assessment set goals and then this process would continue on um, as the board decides but this process would continue on goals would be made assuming sometime within the next couple of months and then in, um, this, you know, we'll, we will decide the timeline but usually with these kind of systems you know about five to six months later folks will reassess and especially with a with many new board members coming on they can reassess the goals set new goals and then move on and then do the assessment tool again a year from then, so it's kind of a system that we'll just continue to to work with with boards as they change. Is this the online system that you're talking about? This is not online right now. We would make an online tool. But I mean, this is this is the tool you're talking about putting online. The making it like a Google form. But yes, so okay. yes, because right now it's just you know, of course in written form because we just want to. Right, make I just that didn't it. know if you were talking about two different. Topics. Oh no, no, no. That's a good question. Thank you. Yeah, no. This this we would turn it into like a Google. Form, so then it would be easier to, for you to fill out and then for us to 
to get the results to be able to see where. Because we, um, so anyway, so, so we can start, you know, with the, part of this um, tool is it has, after you go through the standards, then you can make SMART goals, which are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound, which is very similar to our professional yep. staff and the goals they make for their professional work. Um, so looking first at standard, and this, this tool has, <coughs> the standards are rated on a scale, exemplary, proficient, basic, or does not meet. So that is how they um, rate them. So the first standard. Is that the same ratings that the teachers use on their self-evaluation? I mean, maybe we should just make it. We well, that's that's, that's what this apply. that's what we're kind of. If you want to change, you this know, this is just a draft. This is a draft. So, so right, you guys will. So that's that's that's, that's, that's what, what. Yeah, that's what we're yeah here to do it. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought you were asking. I'm sorry. I thought you were. Um, I'm asking. Uh, are, is it the same? And if it's not, should we make it more um, uniform, uniform across the district? There, first of all, this is not the first time a Board of Education at Scarborough has okay. gone through this yeah. exercise. Yeah. We've done it multiple times. Yeah. Uh, secondly, I think the last time we did it, uh, we used the standards that, that are in the Marzano handbook. And that is more in line with what the superintendent does and what the administrators do and I think the teachers as well. But mm -hmm. This is close. Mm -hmm. it, it, most of the self-evaluation rubrics are very, very similar. But I didn't want the public to think that this has never happened before because it has happened multiple times for multiple reasons. And uh, it's good that we're revisiting. This is just a different tool. To yes. Use. Yes. Well, and last year, Jackie, you might remember, I think, Mary, you went to the session. I know that um, a former board member also went. Um, RSU 21 presented at the October yes. school board's conference um, that they were just in the process of developing and piloting the tool. And so that's what got us looking at this as a potential tool right. to utilize. And you've also reviewed some other states and districts as well. Yeah, this, we did find that this, this looked very clear. Um, so. Mary, can we just emphasize, please, uh, that it is a tool yes. that Scarborough is using, and we'll, we will tailor it for yes. Scarborough. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. No. That's that's what this is about. Because this is this is kind of a rubric we can look at, right. but but we will make it so that it works for for our needs in Scarborough, definitely. So on the on the um, teacher evaluation committee, they have like. You were talking about the, or Jackie was just saying, the Marzano, they use Marzano as the basis for their mm -hmm. evaluation, and it has like an entire program mm -hmm. that allows um, teachers to have self evaluations and administrator evaluations and all kinds of things. Is there anything like that that they offer for our school boards? Our school boards? Yeah. So it's, uh, they don't have that level of. Right. And so the, so the ratings for, now how would that? Because I know it's, there's, if we wanted I don't to make know off it. the top of my head what the exact language it's is. It's innovating, applying, uh, developing, and basic. Okay. It's semantics. Right. Well, if it's a tool that our whole district is using, I just, it, I think it might be a good idea to have it carry through into what we're doing. In terms of the rating language? Well, yeah, and the standards, too, I think. Well, they're not using these same standards. These standards are specific for school boards. Right. So their standards are specific for classroom teachers, and then administrators have their right. own set of standards, and students have So they don't have their own a set, set of standards, standards right. for school boards, is what you're saying? So standard one would be vision, leadership, and accountability. Um, the Board of Education commits to a vision of high student achievement and effective instruction specifies clear goals to realize that vision, demands accountability for results, and supports continuous improvement of the district. And then it also has possible data sources. So if we want to go through and um, look through those standards to see if, if those standards seem to fit with Scarborough's needs, or if there are any standards that um, do not fit or need to be edited. It might be helpful, just as a suggestion, if the board um, 
likes to read maybe each one out loud because the folks yes. that are here and the folks that are watching at home don't have the document in front yeah. of them. Yeah. And when I went through this, I think some of the biggest nuances would be sometimes they mention a committee that we don't have or there's certain yeah. you know references that we that don't apply to us. Um, so A, the board develops a shared mission and vision that reflects student achievement and community priorities and communicates it to the community. B, the board develops annual district goals in alignment with the district vision and mission and adopts a strategic plan developed by the superintendent to meet those goals. Goals are communicated to the community. The board regularly monitors progress on district goals, effective instruction, and student achievement with database information. D, the board keeps informed about what children are learning through reports on scholastic achievement, vocational programs, and the impact of extracurricular activities. Uh, e, the board annually evaluates the job performance of the superintendent and monitors the progress made on the superintendent's goals. And F, the board conducts a self-evaluation to monitor its own performance and participates in professional development, including board training and seminars. Um, was there any comments or questions or edits? regarding those standards. So I would just add a comment um, that this year, the Leadership Council, along with the school board, has worked really hard to revisit our mission, vision, values, and to solidify our goal setting process so that our goals are more consistently implemented, monitored, and um, that they're actually measurable. And so that's been work that's in progress, and I think that when the board is also having an eye to that, that's really going to help us all be, you know, growing in the same direction in terms of um, progress towards continuous improvement. So we had workshops regarding that last summer. Yep. yep. Well, first of all, I think we should decide if, under A, if the shared mission and vision that is currently published is what we support. I don't think we need to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. So, because it's it's a district mission and vision. Yes. I don't believe that we would want to have a different one. Yeah, that, I wondered about that as well because it it does. So, can we just change it to the board supports the district mission, or yeah. something like that? Well, in the way that the, this, the current mission, vision, and values were developed based on the board's current educational mission and right. philosophy, which is a policy. And so what we do then as the practitioners in the field is say, how do we then nest our work inside that broader? So if you think about it almost like a funnel, it starts with the board really big and broad, and then it gets more specific as you get to the district level, the building level, the classroom level, the individual student level. So almost taking out the shared, developing the shared mission, we should be developing the vision that reflects. Mm -hmm. And then from there is where that mission would be, be implemented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We develop the mission mm -hmm. that is implemented by the superintendent. Yes. yes. Yeah. But that is what it says. <laughs> no, T, you're taking out part of the... Well, the questions, we should all hear the questions. Well, Hillary's saying that's oh, what I, it I says. Oh, I think that's, that is what it says. Sorry, I, doesn't it say the board develops a mission? Right. Mm -hmm. And okay. vision? Mm -hmm. So do you, you want to take out shared? No. What I'm suggesting is that we have a mission already, a mission statement. Do we wish to keep that? Do we wish to change it? Mm -hmm. Do we wish to amend it? Like each you year know. for to look at again. Each year to look at again as part of this evaluation? It should be reviewed. Yeah. Right. The so board should do an, evalu an annual evaluation. We haven't done one for three years now, I think. And uh, we've just had too much on our plate to take up time to do that, is my so, assessment of it. So you're saying if we agree with the mission as it stands, then we don't have to do anything right. else. So take out the word develop and just say assess. Because we could say, great, we love it from last year, let's just keep it. 
Is that what you we mean? can do anything we wish because we're the Board of Education. It just takes two votes. Four so, votes, excuse me, to to affirm. So I would just bring your attention to policy AD. This was last revised in 2015. I think it sh is something that should be brought to policy to be revised again, and we talked about this a couple of months ago. Um, but just given everything that was going on, it was something that policy chose to um, table till later on. But in this policy, what's unique about it is that the goals are listed right in here. So that would require you annually to be revisiting this policy, to revisit your goals. Um, and if you looked at some other sample policies from other districts, they don't typically have their goals embedded in the policy. That becomes something that's you know, more of a procedural annual um, review. And you mm -hmm. can do it either way. You just yes. have to be mindful. And I think having this at, in your self-assessment brings your attention to that. And just like we do um, you know, in the fields, we're, we're looking at our mission, our vision, our values, and setting goals every mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. And we do that yeah. really a couple times. And herein lies our problem. You two have been on the board since November, but Mary's been on for a year and a half. Almost. I've been on since I was born. <laughs> <laughs> we, each of us has a different perspective. And that's why it's important, I think, for each of us, I think we're trying to move too quickly tonight. I think what we should do is determine what it is we wish to address. And then each of us needs to address it separately. And then we need to come together to blend what it is we wish to see our school district do. But at this point in time, I think it's almost a waste of time because you haven't had an opportunity to really think about what it is we need to do. That's all I think about, quite frankly, is how are we going to move the school district forward and benefit our children. But that's been my mission. You know, that's my life's work, quite frankly. Doesn't mean you have to think the same way that I do. So it means that I need to listen to you and vice versa. So I guess I'm not sure where you, you, so you I want us, I think that we should say to, you know, this is a lot of work here. There's no way that we're going to address it in an hour's time. I think that we should pick out maybe one from each area to start with. And we take it home and we say, okay, what do I want this to look like for our students? for our school, for our community. Maybe we do two. I don't care how many we do, but we can't do all of them at the same time. No, so Jack, the intention is that tonight you're doing two things. You're establishing a timeline for how this process will work, right, over the course of a year. You're not going through this and rating yourselves tonight. I understand Tonight that. you're just seeing I'm trying how do you want to adjust the tool so that it fits Scarborough because we're just we're borrowing it. From I'm talking community. about a process for the board. I'm not talking about this per se. I think that we should decide on how we want to proceed to do this work. It's been presented to us. Now, how are we going to address it? Right. It's like saying, all right, here's your math book. And you say, all right, are we going to do chapter one, two, three, four? Or are we going to do chapter one, three, five? How are we going to address the topic? And I think we have to agree on how we're going to address this topic because there's so much information to be addressed. So when you look at it and you look at the number of standards and you you look at the number of, of substandards, if you will, under each one, I think the first thing is we need to prioritize first. And secondly, I think we have to come to grips with how each of us perceives it to be relevant and how we wish to make it ours. Well, I think, Jackie, I think well, the process we we want to do is definitely to 
look at these to see if they work for us and then make our edits. What I'm saying, Mary, is you can't... All right, I'll follow your lead. I've, I've said my piece. I just think it's too much to absorb at once. So do you think you want to maybe shorten the number of... St like, do you feel like it's too many standards? What I think we can d determine tonight is, do we want to address five standards at the same time? That's number one. Number two, if we do, how are we going to do that? Are we going to take all of the substandards at the same time, or are we going to say, take two of each? But I think we have to decide how we want to approach it, because it can be overwhelming. I, I can go through these. I could probably do this in two hours' time, thoughtfully, because I've done it before. Mm -hmm. You've not done it before. How long do you think it would take to go through each of these five standards and substandards and thoughtfully determine how it will most impact our school district? So the way that it would work is to say, in my self-evaluation or in any administrator or any teacher, is they would go through, and it is a reflective process, and you're thinking about what's different for you as a board is you're thinking about yourselves as a board. You're not right. thinking about you as the individual. And that's why the questions are, or the standards are worded the way they are. But everybody would rate independently, and then you would submit your ratings to the chair, and the chair would synthesize those ratings. And then there will be gaps, I imagine, that would emerge. So there could be, um, you know, certain standards where you're mostly proficient. The preponderance of evidence is going to show, like, oh, the board is pretty proficient when it comes to, you know, standard one, vision, leadership, and accountability. Oh, standard two, governance and policy. We're you know, developing communication and community relations, just for an example. Oh, we're basic in that area. So that's going to become the area that we hone in on. And that's then you're going to set your goals based on the data. But first, rather, you're right, like just trying to think, what could, what should our goals be? You'll end up with really broad goals that will be hard to measure mm -hmm. and actually celebrate as you make progress. So the idea is get the baseline data, then analyze it for where are the gaps, right? and then set your goals. And that's why it'll take you a couple of months to do. And the thinking is that if you establish that structure now, then when new board members, four or five new board members come on in the fall, they'll have something at least to guide them, but then very quickly, depending on how you set the timeline, in a, in a month or two, you'll do another self-evaluation, and that would happen twice a year. And so twice a year, you would self-eval, and you check, you know, re revisit your goals. And it becomes that cycle that Mary I think showing. what I heard Jackie saying was not the going through and rating ourselves, mm -hmm. but it is a lot to absorb to go through every one of these standards and then each one of these to determine if the words are resonating. And I think that's yeah. where she was trying to say that it's too much to try to take on tonight. Did I understand what you were saying? I think given the experience of the members of the Board of Education, that we would be better off all of us, if we had more discussion rather than just writing and submitting and having it tabulated. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that we, I think that we need to discuss how we proceed, not just give it a rating. Now, well, that's I, just my opinion. I agree with, I, but I think that this framework could still work for that as I, a guide absolutely. for yeah, how we right. do that. So, so I, think I guess you, you whether we just whether we decide if this is going to be an online tool or if it's going to be a discussion guide, like I think that's probably a good idea. We still need to go through it and see if all of these things are relevant for us. If these are things that we want to be part of our discussion, right? Is that yeah. where you're yeah. going, Mary? Yeah, I think so. That too. But I but I do think it that's what this, I think this tool, what you would hope it would bring is, it would bring discussion, it would bring thoughts about not, you know, not just, okay, you rate it, and you say, okay, you got a seven. You know what I mean? Not just something numerical and, oh, this, you got basic and this, and it's more to, to create discussion, because then from that, you're going to create goals. So it's, you know, as I know you've done, you know, multiple times, so. It's always good to look at yourself. 
until I was always good to look at yourself and what you're doing and how you're doing it and is what you're doing worthwhile. I completely agree. So are, are we okay with kind of looking at some of these standards to, to see? I mean, I know it, it is a lot to, well, to do. You're saying look at them, but you're also saying each of us should rate it, and then we're going to compile it. But we're not rating it tonight. I understand yeah, oh yeah. that. No, no. But. I, I don't mean to interrupt. Tell, go ahead and proceed as you, as you had, had decided to proceed, and I'll just fall, try and keep my mouth shut. <laughs> that is not easy. <laughs> not easy. No, you don't, you don't have to do that, that's for sure. Um, so, so did we have any more comments on some of these? these standards? Well, are you talking about rating for standard one or all of them in... That's what I'm asking, Mary. I guess if there are any comments on any particular standards, if, you know, if they look like they fit with what we do in Scarborough. Well, these are standards based on effective school boards. Yes, course. right. So I think what you're looking for is, do they make mention of a committee that doesn't exist here? Or do they make mention of a process that we don't have here? Because it's they've done that. They've looked at the, these national standards and customized it to their district. But every district has its own nuances, right, and its own differences. So that's what you're really, I would suggest you're looking at until then you actually use the tool, and then you'll figure out how to tweak it once you do. So do we develop district goals, or do we develop board goals? In the policy, in the policy, there's board, there's the, board uh, goals. Okay. For the goals that we develop and are implemented, who is responsible for monitoring the progress? Is that something that we would look to you to monitor? Is it something that we would need a committee to manage on the monitoring? You monitor your own goals. And so, Mary, did you have examples of what the past two years goals were? Oh, yes. Oh, no, they're not. In we've done such things in the past as when we've implemented a new program that we'll wanted to have goals, six months goals, 12 months goals, 18 months goals. And I'll tell you who has worked, walked us through that for the most part is, has been Monique Culpitson, the curriculum director, and she has been mm -hmm. unavailable much of the school year. But she has w walked the board through many of these processes as far as the curriculum is concerned and, and progress. Uh, what am I looking for, Joanne? The 24-month well, improvement, improvement plan. plan. Pardon me? The 24-month improvement 24 plan. 24-month improvement plan. And she has annually, or actually, in a couple of instances, She's updated the board every three months mm -hmm. on the progress of what we have been doing and how it is being implemented in the schools. In terms of our district goals. Correct. Separate from board Correct. goals. Okay. But so the school board had goals supporting it. Yeah, so here's, a, here's some examples. These are from 15, 16. Um, goal one is continue to seek ways to engage the public in understanding of the school budget, the driving factors, and the needs of the school department. And then there's sub-targets underneath. So target A says educate community on the understanding of teaching and learning in the 21st century, and um, target B says communicate in a variety of ways to the constituents. And so at the time, I remember one of the very first meetings I was involved in, the board actually assessed their progress towards these goals, and so that goal was noted in progress. Right. Um, and then goal two was to negotiate a three-year contract with teachers and professional staff. And so at the time, right when I first came to the district, you had just settled the teacher's contract, and so it's noted here, goal complete. And then you set 16, 17 goals. And so many of them were the same, just for those of you who are sitting there, that carried over from fifth, from um, 15, 16, into 16, 17 if they were in progress, but obviously goal two was complete. So 
that actually was iterated to be negotiate contracts um, with bus drivers and support staff. So that's how the goals were set before, but right. some of them are really big and broad. Um, and that's like the, that's the end product of going through this and having all these discussions. Right. right. So okay. to me, if you look at standard one, A and B look extremely similar. The board develops a shared mission and vision that reflects student achievement and community priorities. The board develops annual district goals in alignment with the district vision and mission. And can we combine those two? So I would um, think of them separately for this reason. So when we talk about mission, vision, values, goals, think of like a stool that has four legs. Right? And so one leg is the mission, that's why we exist. One leg is the vision, what type of district are we trying to become? One leg is the values, what are our collective beliefs and commitments, how do we behave? And then the fourth leg is the goals. And so what you wanna do is be assessing and aligning all four of those things, but you could have one, you could have a really clear mission without goals. And then that would be like the wobbly table or the wobbly stool that nobody likes to dine at or sit on, right? So you're constantly, you can't really have one without the other because they all should be working together. But yeah, they I know, are but, very separate things. But like this says mission and vision. Mm -hmm. Goals, that, vision, and mission. Like, But that's different because a mission and vision is something that's more enduring. I mean, you're still going to update it, but the goals might be something that's much more short term, wouldn't you say? I mean, because the, the well, goals. Well, longer term. Okay. Yeah. Oh, they can be both, but, but the mission, the mission and vision, I feel like is, okay. is definitely something right. that's more enduring. We're working really hard to make our goals measurable mm -hmm. so that one of the things that we did this year was not totally reinvent the mission and the vision and our values and our goals, but we looked at these documents that we had. So what we used to call our student-centered vision, when we looked at it, we really decided that, you know what, this is not our vision per se, this is more our collective commitments and our values. Because this talks about things like we believe that decisions and planning and instruction and continuous improvement of our schools must be made with students' individual needs and interests as our primary consideration. That's a belief, right? That's like a deeply held belief. Where what we were calling our 24 month plan was referring to things like this as a goal. Provide world class student centered teaching and learning to prepare every student to thrive in learning, career, and life. Well, that's a massive forever and ever goal, right? Mm -hmm. We're always going to be striving toward that. So what all we did with the leadership team this year was, in the school board, was rebrand these things to say, this is really our vision. This is who we're trying to become. And then these targets underneath are more goals that we're trying to accomplish. So it was just cleaning that up so that these things could work together and also so that the community would be able to say, I know what our vision is for the future. It's Theme one, effective teaching and learning. Theme two, safe and inclusive schools. Theme three, global citizenship. Theme four, community engagement. So try, like it's the same work, we're just trying to clean it up and organize it in a way that makes it meaningful and digestible and that people can talk about instead of it just being something that we do and checking a box. Yeah, we have that. Yeah, we did that kind of a thing, if that makes sense. It makes sense to me, but I've been through it, and that's what I'm trying to say. These other three members of the board have not been through it. So I guess I would suggest that, that you take, the, take this, do the ratings, bring it together, and then have a discussion about whatever the ratings happen to be. Maybe, maybe that breaks it down. And maybe, as I know, it's possible that maybe you change this tool, maybe you, you put add another column to it, not enough information, because there might be things that people don't have enough information to actually do a rating on. You know, and that's possible mm. that we can add that. Well, the, the rating, therefore, uh, I'm guessing, would be more from the perspective of a parent or a citizen as opposed to a school board person because of the lack of experience in the role. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, so maybe maybe we want to maybe we want to set set a timeline right now for this work if we feel like this going through it right now cuz I know folks um, 
did make some notes on these papers because I sent them out, you know, prior to the meeting. But if we don't feel like that's the right thing to do right now, we can just kind of work on setting a timeline for kind of how we want to do this work. Well, I guess overall, I think that this the five standards in general. Did you read it? the five standards? Are the first standard is vision, leadership, and accountability. The second standard is board governance and policy governance. The third one is communication and community relations. The fourth one is fiscal resources, staff recruitment and environment. And the fifth one is ethical leadership. So I mean, I think those five spokes of the wheel are appropriate for us to discuss and assess ourselves in if that's mm -hmm. what. Yes and no with the exception of standard four. Um, staff recruitment and environment well, really doesn't, it true. doesn't fall under board purview for us. So it'd be tough to. Well, read. what does environment mean? Like school built, which building? Mean, I think that's the building. Leanne, which one? Standard you? four? Thank you. Well, it does fall under you because you have, at the end of the day, you're approving any professional staff member. Correct, but we're not involved we're not in the actual recruiting. recruitment process. I mean, we're only involved in the final, yes, we agree to <clears throat> but it the says hire that someone else has created. That we're ensuring appropriate policies for staff right. recruitment. I don't think yeah. it's, we're not like actually recruiting staff. Okay. I know, I, th I don't think that should be in the title. I don't either. <laughs> um, you know, and again, promoting conditions for health and safety, that's, those are our buildings. Right. But it's definitely board policy. Yes. And All of that is board policy, and you, you know, the, the idea is seeing the interconnectedness here that without appropriate resources, we can't recruit the most highly qualified staff which then in turn, we can't create the, the safest and most inclusive learning environment. So in all of the, there's policies that address each of those things. And we do have the Health and Safety Committee, so that is something that you know, one board member is involved with as well. As far as, that goes. Um, as, far as the timeline goes, um, this, um, the, RSU 21, which we had um, brought this model from, they have a different kind of timeline. They actually have elections in July, so it, their timeline is different. So that is something that we want to look at. Um, the first thing is the board conducts orientation professional development activities. So that would be something like after the election in November. Um, so I would think that would be something that we'd want to do in the fall kind of inter- no, no, yeah, November, December, in that time frame. Is that something that when people would be in agreement of, of having those kind of, you know, just like in the last fall, we had a workmanship workshop. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of the general time. December would be a good time to be after the uh, school board um, conference and, yes. and the school board elections in November and then um, that information. Okay. So that would be November to December. Now you're looking at a different document than this one. It's the first page of it. It's the first page, first Jack. Page. Yep. Yep. And then um, you, the board adopts the standard of ethics, reviews the mission, vision, and goals of the district, and sets one to three annual goals for the year. So I'm not sure if we'd want to. Well, I think if you wanna, start where you are, you're actually in the fourth. Yeah, yeah. I think we want to. Yeah, right we're. Now. Yeah, and so I think we'd want to um, move this. I think we, to me, I think we'd want to change the maybe the orientation of this personally. But yeah, the reason their timeline looks different is because they adopt their school board members in August or in July. July, July and so that's. Yeah. But right, your. Um, you be on individual board members complete the self evaluation and submit the results to the board chair or designee. And your current operating protocol on the website says that you do your self evaluation by June fifteenth. So you got to kind of use that as your benchmark and work backwards yep. from there, or change that. So that would be. We would be looking to do that possibly in. June. So if we complete the evaluation and submit and submit the results in February. We can meet in executive session to discuss the overall results in March. In February? Then we would adopt 
the goals, right? I don't know. No. I don't get. I think more. Well, these, we need to arrange the order of these. Like, I think we want we want to rearrange the order just to kind of fit what we're doing now. If we want to do the self evaluation this summer, then that would be that would Unless, be. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, no, no. Um, unless if we follow the same sort of pathway that they've laid out, we would just need to adjust things in the fact of we have our elections in November. Right. So it should really be the seven people who are part of that year creating those goals. Right. So adopting the standards of ethics and goals, sure, that might be a January. And then we would need to adjust the policy of when the self-evaluation is done, mm -hmm. move that out to an August, September time frame, so that come November when you have new people back in, they're starting that process over again. And it's something cohesive because it's gonna be really tough to create goals and ask four to five new people to say, Hey, we've done this now. You're going to carry them forward for, you know, the next six months. So it, it just sort of gets them cohesive and aligned. And one of the things I had said from the start, it would have been nice to have had some sort of a, right. um, like an offsite or a, mm -hmm. te not a team building. So that's not the right word, but a boardsmanship. Yeah, a way to get to know people and have common Retreat. goals and mm -hmm. something to work towards together. Mm -hmm. Right. So that we were part of that process. And so that's what we did the, my first year here. And in December, I think was when we had at the December workshop was the boardsmanship workshop. And it was actually, actually no, when I came in July, it happened. It happened in August and September, because I think I was, I was the new one, <laughs> being boarded. Um, but your timeline works because then if you think you're going to do your mid-year review, like April. Mm -hmm. And right. then you're scheduled for, you're on track to do your self-avail by June right. 15th, right? And then right. then you have your executive session in August, and yep. your cycle will just keep continuing. That would work. And, yeah. and keep in mind, too, and keep this in the back of your mind, possible five seats open. Mm -hmm. Three of them will be for three years. Two of them will be for one year. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you start to do things, you have to understand that, that two brand new people will only be there for a year mm -hmm. before they have to seek re-election. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right. Well, and I would, I would argue that's why you need a really good structure in place so that those right. people can be successful. And that's and what I'm saying, have a structure, but yeah. have the framework. I agree with Ready to go. Yeah. I, that's where I was going is that, yes, you have the framework, you have the structure. Mm -hmm. You don't have the details. Yeah, I agree. The details get filled in when well, you're on board. We already have some detail. I mean, we have a working protocol for mm -hmm. goodness sakes. We have the mission. We have our policies. Mm -hmm. So we, we have structure. Yes. But as far as board operations and, and goal setting, that's, that's kind of taken a back seat the last several months. So that's what I'm thinking would be most important for this group to provide mm -hmm. moving forward. Yeah, yeah that's, that's definitely the, the goal. And, and, and a structure that is easy to use so that the implementation doesn't take six months. Right. Right. So are you saying yeah. you want, I just want to understand what, where you're coming from, are you saying you want some kind of different tool or something to use for us to get to that point? Are you yes. Mm -hmm. I think we need a framework in front of us to go along with the mission and the vision. Yeah. We need an operating protocol moving forward between now in the next election. Yep. What are we going to do and how are we going to do it? Yep. We have some framework with the policies, but we have other things that really need attention. So are you, as I know we have the operating protocol on our website. Correct. Is that something that you want to look at to see, does this to? I think that would be a good idea for us to take a look at that yep. and say, yes, I think we have it. this is how we wish to proceed. I think we have that in our packet, actually. Well, I think, or Jackie, you're kind of saying the same thing that Leanne is. We need, like, this is a good framework for 
it would be good to set up this framework so that we can start this process in November or December. Like, so I have November, December is the orientation and the professional development. December to January is the board adopts their, reviews the missions and adopts the goals. April, April is the mid-year review. June is the self-evaluation, which complies with our policy. And then August and September, the board meets to discuss the overall results, and then it starts over again. So if we have this framework in place, but, but I think what I hear you saying is that we need to take ourselves out of this framework for right now and look at what we can do in the next four months. I think that's critical right yeah. now. I truly do. I agree. Yes. Yeah, we were... You know, with this, I think you still want to do a self assessment as you get to that same point. Oh, though. no doubt about it. Yeah, no doubt about but it. But I think this whole framework is really set up for a full board, right? Like the way I mean, well, I'm not saying we can't use pieces of this as, as a part of our self evaluation as we go through and create this framework, but I think for us to create long, you know, long range goals for a board that we don't, I mean, we don't know who's going to be on it isn't. That's why I think, like what Jackie's saying, is we need to create some shorter term goals right. well, that's for, our, the, for our four member yes. board. No, and that was the point with this, just to create right. some short term, not because knowing that's that the board is set the timeline. is going through a change. But just I think the really the the large goal in this was really to give the board structure, given being a four person board is is a challenge, and and we we're hoping to give it right, give, a, give ourselves some structure. And, but I think Jackie's concern is it might take us so long to figure this framework out that it will be November and we wouldn't have set any goals for ourselves Correct. to to work towards for the next for the rest of the summer and so I guess and we, the beginning of the fall. We need to talk about whether that is a direction we would prefer to go. We would prefer to look at the operating protocol. Um, I think if you if you if you do the self assessment from now until when you get it to Mary before your next board meeting is July 19th, and then Mary brings the results of that. You can set your next goals in, in July. You can have your you can have your goal setting conversation in July, and then you have August, September, October, and then in November your new board members are going to come on. Um, and then we after, start from here. Right. Well, they're going to come on after at a workshop meeting, mm -hmm. and so you're not going to set goals your first meeting. You're going to be doing your boardsmanship in November, mm -hmm. December. So then that gets you right to January, where you're saying, "Okay, let's look at these goals. Do they make right. sense?" Right. And some of those goals, some of the goals might be already be met. So they might be that too. You know, that's possible that you've already met some goals. Right. And so, depending on the timeline. So then, so then that new board can can chart their own course. Right. So I guess the question is to move forward. Do we want to use this as is and try and fill this out and come and compile it? before the next board meeting so that we can have those discussions about what we want our goals to be? If you think that's the way, the, the, the best way to do it is fine with me. But I'm saying, you know, we're standing still at the moment. Mm -hmm. Things right. are getting done, but uh, we haven't set how we're going to move forward in this town. We haven't talked about that. Mm -hmm. So, right, we need to talk about and that. And we're going to have to take a goal, recess a for a minute because I have to go to the mm -hmm. ladies' room. Oh. You can't <laughs> conduct business without me. Can we have discussions? Nope. Oh, great. No. <laughs> and then we'll have a break. Yeah, so there'll be a five minute.
quorum has been established. Yes. Um, so I think in kind of wrapping up our discussion, I just kind of want to, it sounds like the timeline, that seems to be, there's an agreement around the timeline. Yep. Um, but I think the main, the main goals we have here in starting this process is to respond to the recall. We've reorganized, you know, we're trying to stabilize what we're doing with the board. Um, and then doing this self-assessment, we want to set goals and solidify our structure so we can keep moving forward. So, like, on the to-do list, how, when does that happen? Like, when do we set those goals? I mean, because if we wait until the next workshop meeting, it's like, that's August. Well, I think Already. each of us can, can bring one or two to the next meeting. Right. Okay. And the, I'd like to start with the first one right here and now. I want us to pledge to each other that we'll trust each other. Absolutely trust each other. We are school board members duly elected and sworn, and I have every confidence that everybody sitting here will do their job. And I think that we need to trust each other to do that and not worry about what other people are saying. You always know what I'm, where I'm coming from. I never hide that. <laughs> right. Is there any other comments before we? No, I just want to make sure that we are going to be timely in being able to get some goals that we can then work towards. Because I think you're right, Jackie. I don't like just yeah. standing so still. You know, with no. I feel like we have no oars. So, so do we want to have the assessment? We'll we'll do the assessment. And bring well, that I to think the, or be, have that before the. I think we can. I mean, because it will July. give us at least a jumping off point yeah. on what to start talking about. That's fine. I mean, that's fine we, with me. If and you to, to Jackie's point, would we also want to each in this next month look at the operating protocol as well? I th I really think we need to decide what we're going to do. I truly believe that. So maybe we want the next meeting to be. So when do you? self-assessment well, because you have to compile it. I have a suggestion, Mary. When you and the superintendent set up the agenda, why don't we start the meeting at 6 o'clock and the first half hour of 40 minutes we'll talk about moving forward, how we're going to move forward. I like it. Anytime we can start a meeting at 6 o'clock, I'm happy. Um, well, no. Oh, oh, shoot, we can't. <laughs> we talk too much. All of us. So, you know, we need to buckle Wait, down we and... because we have the policy one. We have the policy. Well, we can move it. We could move We that. can move policy. Can you be there by 6? I can for July. I cannot for August. Okay. Well, Sorry, that's okay. We just need it for me. the... I know. So, we just need it for the next one. And do you think it's a good goal? Here's a mini goal. Is it a good goal for us to each come with two goals that we wanted to t discuss? To move moving to forward. To move forward, yeah. That's what I'm suggesting. Okay, great. Yeah. Do that. In agreement. I mean, we all we may end up with the same, you know, there may be duplicates, in other words, yeah, but absolutely. it doesn't matter. At least we'll know where each other's coming from and we can talk about it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure if you need more structure because to me, like just saying, okay, bring two goal, like I, I'm not sure. Think about it, Mary. Yeah. Let's just think about it. Mm -hmm. Any other? It'll be interesting to see if your goals line up with your results. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we would need to, so in order for me to compile the self-evaluation tool, I think our meeting is July 19th. Yes. So I would need probably a week. Five well, you need more than that. Maybe more than that to compile. We should have these two by next week. What's the date today? Today's the 21st. Said oh, it the first day of summer. It is the first day of summer. I mean, literally. Yeah, it's the longest day of the year. Can we and can we do it online? Is it? Well, we have to turn. No, it. we can't. Right no, now. I'll just. I can no. make it a Google form for you. It'll take me a couple of days to do it. No, well, I just fill right. it out and ma mail it to you, Mary. Just maybe give to July second. Yeah. July second. Okay. What's your mailing address? Well, you probably don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> Although everybody knows it anyway. <laughs> okay, so 
of self-assessment due July 2nd. You're going to bring goals to July 19th. Yes. Short term. Yep. Yep. I move we go into executive session for the purposes of, what's the purpose? So the to um, me. motion to go into executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA 4056A for discussions concerning two personnel issues not to return to the session. So moved. Thank Second. you, Mary. I put my agenda in the All bag. In. All in favor? And then there's a second motion, motion to go into executive session pursuant to M 1 MRSA 4056D for discussions concerning the superintendent's contract slash evaluation, not to return to public session. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. 11.0 11, um, 11 adjournment. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Can you get to go home? I do.